Hi everyone. Today we're going to be solving AQA, GCAC Chemistry, Higher Tier, Paper 3. In this particular video, we're solving June 2019. This is a part 2 of the question paper in which we're going to be solving from question number 6 to question number 10. So guys, let's get started. Question number 6. Shows a surfer on a surfboard. So we can see the surfer on a surfboard. He or she is surfing. Okay. Surfboard are made from polymers. Either polystyrene core and an outer skin will be present in it, right? Okay, let's see. She figure C shows the displayed formula for polystyrene. We can see C6H5 in one of the carbon. And hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Figure 7 shows an incomplete displayed structure formula of the monomer styrene. If we want to do a monomer from a polymer, it's very easy. Cut the two hands, and then we're going to put the double bonds in between. So we're going to put two carbon bonds, all right, between the two carbons, and we're going to establish the single bonds with the rest of the molecule, making it four carbon bond on each carbon. Once the carbon has four bonds, you cannot have any more bonds. So in that way, if you just keep that in mind, you will get it correct every time. The outer skin of surfboards contain a polyester. Two monomer A and B are needed to make the polyester. Figure 8 shows two monomers are present. And we can see OH and OH in two sides. This monomer A is a dialkyl, And then we can see carboxylic acid in two sides. So this is a dicarboxylic acid. Now the question says, name the functional group in monomer B. So in terms of the functional group, we do not have to say that there is one or two present. So we'll just say carboxylic acid. Monomers A and B join together to produce a polyester and a small molecule. Whenever a polyester is produced, it is a condensation polymerization. And in a condensation polymerization, we will always get a small molecule. In this case, ester produces water. Why does this type of polyester melt when it is heated? Polyesters such as this uh, one that is used in the surfboard, all right, they are thermosophening, all right. Since they're thermosophening, they do not have any crosslinks within the polymer. So thereby, they will become softer as the temperature rises. The outer skin of surfboard is a composite material. The composite material contains glass fibers surrounded by a polyester. Draw one line from each material to the description of that material. So if we have glass fibers, all right, the glass fibers are basically, you know, they are a form of reinforcement, all right, that we use. So glass fibers, we will refer to reinforcement. But when it comes to polyester, we know that polyester form matrix. So this will be the one. The outer skin makes surfboard more expensive. So just two reasons why an outer skin is added to the polystyrene coat. The outer skin makes the polystyrene coat more harder, stronger, tougher, more rigid or waterproof. Polystyrene by itself can soak in some water when it is expanded. A large amount of aluminium sulfate was accidentally added to the drinking water supply at a water treatment work. Describe a test to show the drinking water contained aluminium ions. Give the result of the test. To test for aluminium ions presence, we can add sodium hydroxide to the solution of water sample. If there is aluminium present, then we will get a white precipitate. The precipitate which is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide, thus indicating that this is aluminium ions. Describe a test to show the drinking, drinking water contains sulfate ions. In order to test for sulfate, presence of sulfate ions, all right, there is a classic test, which is we have to add the barium chloride solution. And along with barium chloride solution, we also have to add dilute hydrochloric acid to the water sample. If there is any sulfate ion present, then it will form a white precipitate. Plan an investigation to find the total mass of dissolved solid in a 100 cm cube sample of drinking water. Your investigation should produce valid results. Weigh an evaporating dish. Once the evaporating dish is weighed, then add 100 cm cube of water. Then weigh the evaporating dish back again along with the water. And then heat to evaporate the water and reweigh. Repeat this particular heating process until the mass of the evaporating dish is constant. Subtract the mass of evaporating dish from the mass of the solid that remains, from the mass of the solid plus the evaporating dish. So you will get the mass of the evaporating dish subtracted and then you will get the mass of the solid that remains. Repeat and calculate the average for the same amount of water back again, okay, and you know by discarding any anomalous result 
And after doing so, we can calculate the mass in 100 cm of water if necessary. Titan is a moon of the planet Saturn. Table 3 shows the percentages of gases present in the atmosphere of Titan. Nitrogen 98.4 1.4% methane and 0.2% of other gases. Some scientists think that the living organism could have evolved on Titan. Explain why these organisms could not have evolved in the same way the life is thought to have evolved on Earth. Titan has very little to no oxygen, so photosynthesis has not occurred on Titan. And therefore, no carbon dioxide is present on Titan as well. As a result, oxygen-using animals cannot have evolved on Titan. Saturn has other moons. The other moons of Saturn have no atmosphere. Titan is warmer than the other moons of Saturn because its atmosphere contains the greenhouse gas methane. Explain how this greenhouse gas keeps Titan warmer than the other moons of Saturn. Methane allows shorter wavelength of radiation to pass through from the sun, so which is re-emitted from the surface as longer wavelength of radiation like uh, you know infrared radiation, which is then absorbed by methane in the atmosphere, which allows it to warm up. The atmosphere of Titan contains small amounts of propane. Describe a test to show the propane in an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Give the result of the test. So in terms, you know, if we want to check the bromines, uh, propane carbon-carbon double bond, we will have to test it with bromine water. So the test will be addition of bromine water and the result will be the color will change from orange to colorless. Some students investigated the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. The equation of the reaction is given below. Hydrogen peroxide reacted to produce water and oxygen. 2 ratio 2 is 2 1. The catalyst for the reaction is manganese dioxide. Describe a test to identify the gas produced in the reaction. Give the result of the test. If we are trying to test for oxygen, we can use a glowing splint. And positive result will be the glowing splint will relight into flame. Student A investigated the effect of particle size on manganese dioxide on the rate of the reaction. This method is used. Measure 25 cm cube of 0.3 mol per dm cube hydrogen peroxide solution into a conical flask. Add a spatula of fine manganese dioxide powder to the conical flask. Measure the volume of gas produced every minute for 10 minutes. Repeat steps 1 to 3 with some coarse manganese dioxide lumps. The method student A used did not give valid results. Which two improvements could student A make to the method to give valid results? So the first one, it says the measure the increase in mass of conical flask and contents. Once the oxygen gas is produced, the oxygen gas will escape, so the mass will decrease. Measure the volume of gas produced every two seconds. So measuring the volume of gas every two minutes will not give any more advantage. It's just the same thing, it's better even measuring in water after every minute. Place the conical flask in water bath at constant temperature. This will give a valid result because the temperature will be constant in every experiment. And as the temperature stays constant, the rate of reaction will be affected only by the use of manganese dioxide you know, uh, lump sizes. Use 0.05 mol per dm hydrogen peroxide solution and use 1 gram of manganese dioxide each time. Since you are using fixed concentration of hydrogen peroxide in every experiment, so using a fixed mass of manganese dioxide each time will give a uh, valid result. Student B used a method which give valid results. Student 9 Figure 9 shows students' results. So time in minutes, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10 minutes. And the increase in volume of gas in CM cube. Determine the mean rate of reaction in CM cube per second between 2 and 4 minutes for coarse manganese dioxide lumps. Give your answer to two significant figures. So between 2 to 4 minutes. First of all, we're going to measure at 2 minutes and then at 4 minutes. We're going to extrapolate to find out the values. So we can see this is 45 and this is 56. So volume of oxygen, 56 minus 45 equals to 11 cm cube. And the time in terms of seconds is 2 minutes, so it's going to be 120 seconds. So rate is equals to 11 divided by 120 seconds, which is equals to 0 0.09167 cm cube per second. Hydrogen peroxide molecules must collide with manganese dioxide particles for catalysis to take place. Student B repeated the experiment with coarse lumps of manganese dioxide. Student B used the same volume of 0.2 mol per dm cube hydrogen peroxide instead of 0.3 mol per dm cube hydrogen peroxide. Sketch on figure 9 the curve you would expect to see. Assume that the reaction 
is complete after nine minutes. Because we are using less concentration of hydrogen peroxide, so the line will start at the origin and then it's going to produce a less steeper line than the solid line. However, it will level off at 40 cm cube because we are using lesser concentration now. We are using like, you know, uh, two thirds of the original uh, uh, concentration. So if we multiply that with the volume 60, then we're going to get 40 cm cube as our final amount of product. The reaction will take more amount of time to finish. However, it will finish at 40 cm cube. The rate of reaction is different when manganese dioxide is used as a fine powder rather than coarse lumps. Explain why. Your answer in terms of collision theory. When we use fine powder, the surface area of the fine powder of manganese dioxide is much much greater so more collisions of hydrogen peroxide molecule occurs per unit time at a higher surface area. This question is about reversible reaction and equilibrium. Hydrogen is used to produce ammonia in the Hopper process. The hydrogen is made in two stages. Stage one is the reaction of methane and steam to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So methane as a gas reacted with steam produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Calculate the atom economy for the formation of hydrogen in stage one. So when calculating the atom economy, we have to take into account only in the product that is you know, produced and the amount of reactant in total. So percentage atom economy. Explain why a low pressure is used in stage one. Give your answer in terms of equilibrium. When we look into the equation, we see that there are two moles on the reactant side and four moles on the product side. Our answer will be like this. Because there are fewer moles of molecules on the right hand on the left hand side and more number of molecules on the right hand side, so there is a higher yield of hydrogen and carbon monoxide naturally. So low pressure is used in the system. Stage 2 uses the carbon monoxide produced in stage 1. Carbon monoxide is reacted with more steam to produce carbon dioxide and more hydrogen. The equation for the stage 2 is given here. Carbon monoxide reacts with steam to produce CO2 and produce hydrogen. What is the effect of increasing the pressure in the equilibrium yield of hydrogen in stage 2? Since both sides have same number of moles of gas, there will be no effect of yield by increasing the pressure. Figure 10 shows the percentage yield of ammonia produced at different temperatures and pressure in the harbor process. We can see 450 degrees Celsius up to 350 degrees Celsius is used. The temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmospheres are used in the harbor process. A student suggested that a temperature of 350 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 285 atmosphere could be used instead of those in the harbor process. Determine how many times greater the percentage yield of ammonia obtained would be. So we'll have to extrapolate from 285 and touch the line of 350 and then move to the left. So at 350 degrees Celsius and 200 atmospheric pressure, we have 63% yield. Whereas at 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmosphere, we have 28% yield. So 63 divided by 28 is equal to 2.25 times greater yield will be produced. A pressure of 285 atmosphere is not used in the harbor process instead of 200 atmospheres. Explain one reason why. Using higher pressure requires more expensive e operating equipment. So the energy cost to produce that pressure and the equipment cost would be too high. How does figure 10 show the forward reaction if the harbor process is exothermic? When we increase the temperature according to the graph, what do we see? We see that increasing temperature decreases on that same amount of pressure, it decreases the percentage yield. That means the forward reaction is exothermic. We can say the answer like this. Higher temperature produces a lower percentage of yield of ammonia. That means the forward reaction is exothermic and the backward reaction is endothermic. World population of ammonia is now about 30 times greater than it was in 1950s. Such is why the demand for ammonia has increased. World, since the world population has increased, there is a higher demand for fertilizer because more food needs to be produced. And there is also a higher demand for drugs, dyes, and explosive and nitric acid that are made from ammonia. Uh, so, you know, the production needs to increase as well to meet the demands. Guys, thank you for watching the video. See you in the next video.